I think one of the hardest things in life is regrets over past actions or decisions. My grandfather had a busy life, but on Wednesday afternoon, he took time off from his grocery store and he traveled to a town about 30 miles away to a mental hospital where he had regular visits. And one day he noticed a very dignified looking couple sitting talking. And when it came time to leave, the woman got up, gathered her things together and and left what turned out to be her husband there in the institution. My grandfather wondered because the gentleman seemed to be quite normal, but after several visits he noticed that sometimes the man would get up and pace and he would walk back and forth and he would keep repeating the words, I shouldn't have done it, I shouldn't have done it, I shouldn't have done it. So one evening as he was heading home he noticed the lady standing waiting for the bus and it was beginning to rain. And so he pulled over and asked if he might take her home. She recognized him from their visits and so she got in the car. And as they drove along he asked her if she would mind telling him what was it that this man had done that he kept saying I shouldn't have done. Well, she said, he had a very good job with a large company, but just before the Great Depression hit, a school friend of his started a new business and asked him to leave his secure post and to work with him in this new venture. When the Depression hit, the company went bankrupt and my husband lost his job. He would sit in the kitchen as I was making meals and working around and he couldn't get another job and he would put his head in his hands and he would say, I just, I shouldn't have done that. But then he began to pace and he would walk through the kitchen and then into the living room and down the hallway and he would repeat over and over again, I shouldn't have done it, I shouldn't have done it, I shouldn't have done it. And eventually he had to be institutionalized. He wore a groove in his brain with this particular regret. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the Corinthian church in his second letter to them, he says to them, I'm sorry I had to write that very strongly worded letter to you. And at the time I was sorry, but I'm not sorry now because I saw that you were sorry after a godly sort. He said, godly sorrow works repentance to salvation. Now, not salvation from the penalty of sin, but salvation from the damage, the the influence of sin. And he goes on to say that it produces repentance leading to salvation not to be regretted but the sorrow of the world produces death. A person who makes bad decisions or takes a wrong course of action and becomes filled with regret will be consumed by that, will be controlled by it if he doesn't have something to do with it. How thankful we are that there's a throne of grace, that we can go to the Lord with all our sorrows and all our regrets and all our troubles and cast them at his feet. And the Lord is able to do something wonderful with them. Now Paul goes on to say that you were as serious about setting the thing right as you were in making the wrong choice in the first place. Sometimes people make a mistake on the front page of the paper and then they put the retraction way back on page 23 in five-point type. We need to be as serious about setting the thing right as we were in making the wrong decision in the first place. But if we do that, Paul says, if you're truly sorry in a godly way, you'll never be sorry you were sorry. And so it was with this poor man. He was so overwhelmed by this bad decision, he couldn't get past it. It's a terrible thing to walk through life backwards. Paul says, forget the things that are behind and press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Aren't you glad 
that the God we know is able to restore to us the years that the locusts have eaten. He is able to turn curses back into blessings. He's able to take the broken things of our lives and turn them into stained glass windows. And so the mistakes of our past can actually become the ministries of our future. This is what he said to Peter. When you are restored, strengthen your brethren. And so the hard lessons Peter learned, instead of living a life of regret, became a pathway. The stumbling stones became stepping stones. And it became a path of usefulness for God because he was willing to be honest about the mistake and then apply the lessons he learned to helping others so they wouldn't have the same regrets. God help us to learn the lesson that godly sorrow rather than the sorrow of the world is the path forward as we seek to do what the Lord has given us to do in restoring the things that have been damaged, in casting them on the Lord and receiving his grace so that we might move on without regrets and not end up saying, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it.